Hi, and welcome to part 3 of week 9 of Triple E157 Digital Modulation Techniques. In this part of the lecture, we will be talking about bandpass digital modulation techniques and how we transmit our bits, represent them into symbols, and transmit them over a wireless channel. Okay. So for the bandpass transmission, so far, your line codes and your MPAM techniques are used for a baseband. And if we want to transmit bits over a bandpass modulation, uh, over a wireless channel, we have developed the bandpass modulation techniques. And the three basic techniques are ASK or amplitude shift keying, PSK or phase shift keying, and FSK or frequency shift keying, which are also direct analogs of AM, PM, and FM. So a short description of all of those are shown in the table here. Okay, quite simply, when we talk about ASK, the amplitude is shifted based on the uh, bit sequence. Phase shift keying for PSK, uh, the face of the carrier is changed depending on the bit sequence. And finally, for FSK or frequency shift keying, your frequency uh, changes whether your bit input is zero or bit input is one, or if it's uh, higher, if there are number, if there are more bits per symbol, then your frequency shifts into a certain value, depending on that uh, symbol. Okay. So first things first, what is the amplitude shift keying? It's the same as MPAM. Right? It's the same as MPAM. But the pulse shape can be defined by the following. So our pulse shape is in the form of a cosine pulse. Okay? So this cosine pulse has a duration 0 to Ts. Okay? And that means, basically, what that looks like is that the amplitude of your carrier okay, uh, will change depending on the... Uh, combination of bits that are that are uh, injected into your digital modulator okay so basically it's just an amplitude modulated version of pam okay if you put a pam signal into a sinusoidal carrier and multiply it to multiply it to each other then you get an esk symbol so think of it as an analog modulated signal where your message signal is a sequence of bits in, uh, coded as spam. Okay. In here, we have a parameter f sub c, which is called the carrier frequency, which you will set depending on the specifications of your digital modulator. If you want to transmit over Wi-Fi, your f sub c is around 2.4 gigahertz or 5 gigahertz. If you're going to transmit over uh, your cell phone, your GSM, your f sub c is 900 megahertz or 1800 megahertz. Okay. A here is a parameter that defines the energy of your constellation. And this is actually related to the minimum distance between symbols. Okay? So due to the bandpass nature of your signal, your ASK actually uses twice the bandwidth of MPAM. If you recall your frequency modulation property, you will see that the uh, amplitude shift keying signal, okay, since we modulated the PAM, put it in a higher frequency, the bandwidth that it uses is twice the bandwidth of PAM. That means your ASK is less bandwidth efficient compared to your pulse amplitude modulation. Mainly because it's just in the bandpass. Okay? So, uh, oops. Okay, so the constellation of a MASK is similar to that of MPAM. It exists on a number line. Depends on the uh, amplitude of your carrier frequent or your, your carrier signal at the at that symbol period. If you have a binary ASK constellation, the uh, the constellation is similar to a bina binary PAM constellation, and you have your uh, parameter here D that defines the minimum distance between symbols. So again, uh, if you have a constellation with a larger number of symbols, then you use more power. Or if you don't want to use more power, if you can't use more power, then you have to reduce the distance between symbols. So there's a trade-off between them. Okay. Next is the phase shift keying or PSK. Basically, uh, it's a technique that encodes your MPAM symbols evenly over the range 0 to 2 pi. Okay. So if you have M symbols, then your transmitted symbol, the M transmitted symbol, is equal to this. You have a constant amplitude constant frequency, carrier frequency, and some phase, theta, theta sub m, which is dependent on the symbol. 
So this theta sub m is basically your uh, 2 pi distributed over m integers. Okay? So if your m is equal to 4, then theta m is equal to, the set of values of theta m is equal to uh, 0 uh, pi over 2. Okay, pi over 4, sorry, yeah, pi over 2, pi, and 3 pi over 2. There you go. Okay, and that is your 4 PSK signal or quaternary PSK constellation. So, A here is a constant amplitude. It defines the power of your transmission. F sub C is the carrier frequency, okay, which defines where you transmit your signal. Again, if it's Wi-Fi, 2.4 gigahertz or 5 gigahertz, if it's your cell phone, that would be 900 MHz and 1800 MHz and so on and so forth. Okay. An illustration is shown for your reference. Okay. A PSK also has a constellation. But it's very different from uh, an ASK constellation and a PAM constellation in that it uses two dimensions. How? If we convert your PSK in its phasor form, okay. see uh, here, convert it to its phasor form. This phasor form defines a complex number. And this complex number can be found on a two-dimensional plane. Okay, so this is your real part. This is your imaginary part. So if we have a PS, PSK signal, the constellation, since A here is constant, right, theta m is the only thing that changes, then we can find that the PSK constellation will form a circle. So this is an example of your 8 PSK constellation. This is 0. This is pi over 4 pi over 2, 3 pi over, uh, yeah, 3 pi over 4, pi, okay, uh, 5 pi over 4, 3 pi over 2, and uh, the last one would be uh, 7 pi over 4. Okay? So because of this uh, two-dimensional implementation of your constellation, you can see that the power that the PSK constellation uses is less than the power what is used by ASK even if you have the same number of uh, bits per symbol. Okay? Because the power of a signal here is defined by its distance from the origin. And for PSK, the distance of each symbol from the origin is constant. So the power will only be dependent on the amplitude of your carrier. Similar to how a PM wave and a FM wave uh, the power, their power is only dependent on the amplitude of your carrier. Okay? So, this is your PSK constellation and this is how we view the, P uh, how we use the constellation to compute the power. Okay? So, if we can use more symbols for less power, right, compared to ASK. And, again, if we add more symbols, if we add more symbols, let me just clean this. If we add more symbols here, Let's say we have a 16 PSK constellation. As you can see, the distance between the symbols decrease. If you want to maintain the distance between symbols, you have to enlarge the radius. Okay? And if you have a larger radius of a circle, you need to use more power. So there's an inherent trade-off between the number of symbols that you can pack inside your constellation compared to the power used and the, uh, and the reliability of your constellation. So, if you want more reliability, you need more power. If you want more reliability for constant power, you need less number of bits per symbol. Okay. So, uh, just just a note though, uh, for, for, for a Wi-Fi standard, uh, it, your, your con the constellation used by your uh, link between your device and your router is actually dependent on the signal power. It will shift into... A constellation with less number of bits per symbol if the power is limited. And if the power is greater, then it will shift to a constellation with a higher number of bits per symbol. Okay, so that's how you use uh, your uh, computers to adjust the digital modulation scheme when you want to transmit signals. Okay. So uh, what about a combination of ASK and PSK? Maybe we can modulate both the amplitude and the phase depending on the bit sequence that we put inside your uh, constellation. And that is how the quadrature amplitude modulation 
is formed. So if we have this signal where a sub m and phi sub m is a function of the symbol input, then the output can be expressed in the form, instead of using your amplitude and phase, let's express them in terms of its real part and its imaginary part. Or uh, in, in communication jargon, it's the in-phase part and the quadrature part. So this is your in-phase, which corresponds to the real part of your symbol, and this is your quadrature part, which corresponds to the imaginary part of the symbol. So if we convert this signal to its complex form, we have this signal right here. So this signal is constant in the complex domain, and then we can plot it in terms of the constellation. So as compared to ASK again, this quadrature amplitude modulation uses a two-dimensional constellation, similar to PSK. But instead of having a constant amplitude, which is found in PSK, we can also modulate the amplitude to be different. So, in here, the definition for quadrature amplitude modulation, your uh, real part and imaginary part are taken from this set, which is similar to how we form a pulse amplitude modulation signal. However, the difference here is the highest value is until square root of m minus 1 instead of m minus 1. Okay, so, we expect m here to be a perfect square when we form our quadrature amplitude modulation. Okay, So the constellation looks like this when you have that definition where your in-phase and your quadrature part will be in, the, in this set right here. So you'll have a square or rectangular constellation. Right? So if the number of bits per symbol is 2, you have 4 symbols and this is the constellation. 16 symbols, this is the constellation. The distance between adjacent points is equal to 2 times d. So if you look at this definition of the set, you can see that the difference or the distance between two adjacent symbols is 2D. Right? And it's more bandwidth efficient compared to ASK. Right? You can pack more bits per symbol for the same power level compared to uh, ASK, also with PSK. Okay? But the complementation of QAM is more complex compared to ASK and PSK. And we will quantify how QAM has more advantage in terms of reliability compared to ASK and PSK in the next part of the lecture. For now, this is how a QAM constellation can be formed. Okay? So you can extend this, actually. You can extend this to 64 uh, symbols. You can extend this to 256 symbols, and so on and so forth. Okay? Lastly, we have what we call the frequency shift keying, where the uh, frequency is changed depending on the symbol. Okay? So if you have a frequency spectrum with a bandwidth of m times delta f, where m here is the uh, number of, sorry, the number of symbols, delta f here, so this is the number of symbols, delta f is the uh, frequency shift. Frequency shift between two points, between two symbols. So your uh, FSK signal will be defined by this. A here is a constant amplitude. T sub S is the symbol period. Okay. So this T sub S, corres 1 over T sub S here corresponds to the frequency shift. Okay. And uh, A here defines the energy, again, similar to PSK. And some illustration for a 2FSK signal, as you can see here, for 1, you have a higher frequency in a signal, and for 0, you have a lower frequency, and so on and so forth. Okay? So this is how an FSK signal works. If you have 2FSK, you only need two frequencies. If you have a larger uh, constellation, if you have more symbols, then you're using more bandwidth. Okay? So the difference here is that if you have more symbols, you're using more bandwidth. As compared to ASK and QAM, if you're using more symbols, you need to use more power. But for FSK, if you increase the number of symbols, you're actually increasing the bandwidth, and your power here can be fixed. Okay. So the constellation of FSK is also uh, it also exists. 
However, uh, it's uh, more complicated. It uses M dimensions to form a constellation. So that is out of our imagination. We can't imagine. This is not. This is not the, what, what you see here. A four a four FSK constellation does not really. Uh, it's not, does, does not really represent its geometric constellation. Okay. So it uses four dimensions. Therefore, it uh, we can't visualize that because we can only visualize up to three dimensions. Okay. So due to this property, however, due to the orthogonality between your symbols. Okay? You, you just accept now that they are orthogonal. Okay? Due to this property, your FSK can use more symbols without decreasing the distance. So if you add another dimension here, the distance of this symbol from here to here, this symbol to this symbol, this symbol to that symbol, and so on and so forth, is still the same. Okay? So if you just increase the number of... Uh, symbols then you don't really decrease the minimum distance between symbols so the trade-off here is that it uses more bandwidth therefore fsk can be used for systems that are limited in power so if you have a system that is limited in power but it's not limited in bandwidth then you can use more symbols to transmit in that bandwidth without compromising the power being used and this is the main advantage of FSK compared to your ASK, PSK, and QAM. It's similar to your split phase line code. Where if you're limited in power, why don't you just use a transition between the bits to encode your signal? Oh, sorry, the transition between the signal to encode your bits. Sorry. Right. Okay. So for FSK, it's something similar. If you don't have any more space for power, but you have space for bandwidth, why not transmit in a different bandwidth altogether at the same time? And that's how FSK works. Okay? So if you have a larger uh, larger number of symbols, more bandwidth is used, but your minimum distance does not change. Okay? And this interesting property will also carry over when we talk about uh, the reliability of an FSK constellation. So to summarize, we have different bandpass digital modulation techniques developed for wireless links. And the three basic types are ASK, PSK, and FSK. ASK and PSK can be combined to form a more efficient technique called the quadrature amplitude modulation. But this technique adds implementation complexity. Right, we will expand more on this when we talk about the constellation maps and the properties of the different constellation maps of these uh, different bandpass modulation techniques. Okay? So that's the end of this part of the lecture. If you have any questions, do not hesitate to leave a comment in the comment section below. Thank you for listening. See you next meeting.